Hi Floss Tube. My name is Mary and I am a Mary Stitcher here on YouTube and also on Instagram. And welcome to Floss Tube number three from me. I'm here to talk about what I've been doing since my last video, which was on New Year's Eve a couple weeks ago. And one of the themes of that night was the NYE 12 by 12 hosted by Kia B. And this year I had decided not to try and start a bunch of charts because I'm really trying to work on whips this year and I figured I'd allow myself a couple of starts. I knew I had a New Year's Day start coming up shortly after midnight, so I just went with two. And the two that I chose were first, Dancer from Barbara Anna, which I've noticed a lot of people rediscovering this year. And this is from the 2021 Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. There were a lot of cute charts in this one, so I would say that's a good one to check out. And my progress on Dancer is here. I'm doing this on a 20 count gray sparkle Ada, which is kind of fun and different. And I like it small. I'm planning this to go into a round frame I have, so I'm hoping I've made it small enough to fit the frame I need. Anyway, I have not gotten to the antlers yet. You can see I'm still working on the ears. I changed the sweater from the orange that was charted to a variegated pink, and that floss was called Heartthrob, and it's part of a Forbidden Fiber Co drop that they did a while back. You may still be able to get it on their website. I truly don't know, but any variegated floss would work for that. I just thought the pink looked better than the orange as far as how I would use this chart. Anyway, so that is Dancer. My second start, again, keeping with kind of a holiday theme, was the fifth day of Christmas from Hello from Liz Matthews. Now, I've gotten all the charts so far for this 12 days set that Liz is doing. And she charts them two ways. She charts them as a rectangular design where you've got this kind of a lattice work border on the bottom and the top, or she has them in her tree format, which everybody loves doing these trees. Now, I am doing the rectangular shape, but I am putting it, putting all 12 on one piece of fabric. And Liz offers on her website a frame so that you can stitch all 12 together and she lays them out I think three by four maybe it's four by three anyway she lays them out three by four I'm stitching mine in a six wide and two high orientation because I want to display it along a mantel piece of the fireplace once I've got all the pieces together so that kind of long linear format's going to work for me and it would also work if you were going to hang it above a sofa or you know, in a dining room above a buffet, or there's all kinds of ways that that layout would work. So that's what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping the top border on all of the days, and I'm eliminating the bottom border for the top row, and then the reverse for the other. The bottom ones will have their bottom lattice, and they'll be butted up against the other one. So that is my 12 days. And here is what I've got. I'm only really on my second one, and since I tend to work right to left, being as how I stitch in hand, what you've got here is the six geese -a laying block, and then this is the block for the fifth day. And it's got some little trees, the rings go up here. So I haven't gotten very far, but it's you know good progress. I'm comfortable with it. And this is on a 22 count Ada. Technically, I guess it's Hardanger fabric if it's 22, but it's 22 count. Then my only other start since I videoed last is my New Year's Day start or my middle of the night start, which is Modern Folk Embroidery's 2024 Stitch Along. It's not a mystery. You can see the whole design is here and it's called No Time Like the Present. And the way that Jacobs laid out the stitching is January through October, little slices across here, and that the theory is then you would have November and December to get it framed and display it before the end of the year. Now in my case, again, since I stitch in hand, I tend to like to work from the bottom up when I can. So 
I'm going rogue and doing the bottom strip instead of starting at the top and working down. It's just the way I roll. Anyway, this particular piece is being stitched on 40 count platinum linen from Zweiger, and you can see how I've got the three colors instead of just the two. I'm using Northern Lights by Gloriana, Granny Smith is the green, and then Hazelnut is the color that the deer is. It's a headless deer right now, which is a little dis disorienting, but I'll get there. I'm just going to stitch the whole deer because I didn't want to just stitch the bottom couple of rows of them and come back cold. I feel like if you're using variegated thread, it's better to sort of keep going until you finish each motif. So I'll probably do a little bit of jumping around here as I go through the months. But so far, I'm really enjoying this. It's very pleasant to stitch. Now, that's my starts. As far as whips since the last time we met, I have only two other whips that I have worked on. Um, one is my Bristol, and my goal was to start, this is from Dutch Treat Designs, it's M.H. Smith. Um, my goal after this sitting not touched for pretty much all of 2023 and the better part of 2022, I decided I was going to try to do one or two lengths of thread every day before I started my other stitching and see how I was going. Um, when we last got together, I had most of just the first row of alphabet done. I think I was lacking three letters. So now, just from doing a couple of lengths every day, so I have to pull back, this is a bed sheet size. There we go. I finished, oh gosh, the wrinkles look terrible. I'm so sorry. Um, I finished the first alphabet. I've got all the way A through Z on the top line, and I've gotten all the way across to where I'm about halfway done with the second alphabet. And that's just literally from doing one or two threads a day for the last two weeks. So I'm pretty excited. It's, it's more progress than she's seen for a while. And it's easy to say, hey, you know, you can do anything for a little while. It doesn't take that long to put one length of thread in. It's a lot of days I did two because once you're on a roll, if I'm partway through a letter, I go ahead and do a little bit more, but never more than two in a day, and I've already made that much more progress, so I'm really excited about that idea. And it's not a new idea, and it's certainly not an original idea. One of the people who I've seen who's the most effective at it is So Me Sarah. Sarah has done uh, some smaller charts, but she's really diligent about doing her one thread or two thread a day, and she's had some finishes already with some of the things that she's done. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And let's see, my other whip, my last whip is my Whipco, one of my Whipco projects for the year. And this was one of the ones it's called, it's Ursilia's Sampler. And this is a sampler in the private collection of Jean Lee from The Attic but she's made it available for purchase through her shop, so that's very cool. And this one was recently finished by Sarah of Sarah's Stitchy Spot. Um, she too, I think, was using this as a focus piece and finished it. She did hers in red and it's just beautiful. I'm doing mine in gold, just because I like to be different. But this is 20 count, Ada of a mysterious origin. I couldn't tell you the, who the dyer is, but I'm using the Gloriana Old Gold for the alphabet. And on this one, last time we saw this in my whip parade, I had about three letters done on this end, and that was it. So just in the last two weeks, I've been able to focus on this. And actually, I really only gave her five days and I've gotten all the way through that first alphabet, and again, I've started the second alphabet. So, coming right along. It's been an alphabet kind of a period this last couple of weeks. I'm done with that now for my Whip Go goal, and I'll move on to my second Whip Go for the next two weeks. So that is it for the stitching. However, I need help with something. First of all, I want to announce that the winner of my share is 
and Acosta, 2864. So, Anne, if you see this video, go ahead and reach out to me. You can direct message me on Instagram, or you can email me at, do, 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 here we go, amarystitcher at gmail.com. Sorry. And again, that is for the Blackbird Designs A Cup of Cheer chart. So get a hold of me in and I will get this out in the mail to you. Pretty cool. Now, I need to get your advice. And so what I'm going to do is here on FlossTube and also on my Instagram, I would like you to help me select my birthday start. I'm very late in picking my next entry into the So Fancy B-Day Sal that is put on by Memphis Sarah E. here on Floss Tube. I love Sarah. And her celebration of her birthday was what got me to do my first fancy lady, which was Holly, who I recently finished. Now I happen to be lucky enough to get my hands on three out of print charts, and I want you to help me decide which one I should stitch as my birthday start. The first one is the Garden Fairy. And this chart is from 1998 is when this one came out. And it's pretty in the picture, but what really got me looking for this one is I saw it stitched up. You know, that's always the way. The pictures can only do so much, but when you see a stitch, I saw it stitched up and the colors looked so much more vibrant and pretty. And it may just have been that the, the linen choice was different, but this is really a pretty chart. So that's one possibility for my birthday start. The next one, which I'm very excited about, is Shimmering Mermaid. There she is. And I love this one, particularly because in her tail, there's kind of almost a little bit of a patchwork quality to it. Lots of color, lots of color changes there, but it's just really a sweet chart. And in fact, just last night, I saw that Heidi Stitching Faye uh, is working on this one as well, and she showed her progress. It's just so pretty. She has hers on a little bit lighter color fabric, and it's just lovely. So this is another possibility for my birthday start. The last option is one that's really, it's part of a sal right now, and it only recently went out of print, so I think you can still get a hold of it. Um, again, it's all going to be on the secondary market at this point. I just looked into a shop that still had some. Now, she was upcharging a little for it, but not nearly the prices that you would see on eBay. So this one is the Woodland Fairy. And again, just pretty colors, nice chart. Uh, you know. I like the wings, what can I say? I like a good wing. So this is my third one. So what I would like for you to do in the comments, if you would be so kind, is tell me which of these three, Shimmering Mermaid, the Garden Fairy, or the Woodland Fairy, which you think I should start on my birthday, which is coming up in the second week of February. So let me know and when I do my next video, I will let you know what you've chosen for me. It's going to be one of those three. I think I've got the DMCs for most of them. In fact, one of them I had the gal send me the DMCs with it. I've got a lot of crinics, so I think I'll be able to definitely get started on whichever one you select for me. So I'm trusting you, and I hope that you will you know, choose, I can't lose. They're all beautiful. And ultimately I will stitch them all, but I just think it'd be fun if you helped me pick which one to start first. So that's it for me today. Short and sweet. <laughs> I know there's a lot of other floss tubes that you want to get onto. And I would love it if you would hit the like button, if you would subscribe to my channel. It really helps me to get seen by more people. And I appreciate that. Also, comments. Go ahead and make a comment. Comment whether it is about something I've stitched or whether it's about which of these three you think I should start. Whatever you'd like. But I always appreciate your comments. And thank you very much for visiting me today. And that's it. Have a wonderful Sunday. And I'll see you in two weeks. Thanks.